probably the most important limitation of proof of work is that it takes a lot of processing power to keep up the network. It takes lots and lots of electricity to keep it secure. And the moment that there's, that some attacker, some uh, dishonest entity can get enough processing power, can pay for enough computers or whatever, then he can take over the network effectively. He can start making it his own and he can start going back and rewriting the blockchain history at will. And so proof of participation addresses this problem. We don't use any kind of proof of work. Uh, there's no processing power that's required. Who's allowed to sign for blocks is distributed within the nodes in the node registry. And how nodes make it into the node registry is its own kind of complex process. But ultimately at the end, it's very difficult for one person to take over all the nodes in the registry, and especially difficult for them to do it quickly. Say in proof of work, someone can suddenly buy a lot of processing power and take over the network just like that. Whereas in uh, proof of participation, even in the best case scenario for an attacker, they would have to spend a very long time infiltrating the node registry and really kind of outplace everybody else to eventually get the kind of power that they would need. Proof of work tends to become centralized over time. And this is because a few people wind up with all the resources to buy the computers and then they capitalize on the scale of economy. So once they have a mining farm, then it's cheaper for them to get the electricity and it's cheaper for them to buy the number of machines at scale that they need to actually stay in control of the network. So over time, a very small number of people concentrate all of the mining power in the network. And this is the way the state of say Bitcoin today, for example. With proof of participation, People apply in the node registry with by uh, guaranteeing to lock a certain number of funds. And from the original distribution of funds in the node registry, when the blockchain launches, there are several people who all make relatively equal amount of funds. And those people are gonna start when they spend the funds with each other. The money created by the network, say the tokens created by the network, are going to be distributed among the community. And from there, the people who have the tokens in the community are the ones who have the best shot to actually be admitted into the node registry. So we don't think that uh, that'll tend to centralize over time. So proof of work has a particular problem when it comes to non-financial use cases, which is that as soon as the thing that you're trying to transfer is more valuable than the electricity that it would take to take over the blockchain, then you can actually make a profit by cheating the blockchain. So you can spend the money that it would take to overtake the current main chain on the proof of work network and then take back the transaction that you had would, so that it still reflects that you own the more valuable thing and you come out at a profit on top of this. In proof of participation, we limit into one specific point of the code the place in which finance interacts with the security of the blockchain. So for the very first version of ZooBC that we release, we still use the number of staked funds in order to determine who gets to be the block creators in the blockchain, in which case there's potentially some weakness that the person who owns more, or say if the value of the coin is small, then the blockchain's not able to secure large things. But because we've isolated this in a very small part of the code, for future versions, we intend to keep the majority of the proof of participation algorithm intact, working exactly the same way. And we expect that uh, we'll have an alternate mechanism to decide who is graduated into the node registry. And at this point, the uh, security on the blockchain has nothing to do with the value of the token itself. And so any kind of asset that you manage, it doesn't matter how valuable it is, there won't be a, any kind of uh, easy or manageable way to use that money to attack the blockchain and rewrite the history. Mm -hmm.